Did you know that the order of your characters matter? Lara is more likely to be attacked because of her passive, and so if an enemy decides to target her with an area of effect attack, one side won't get hit. The only character that would be hit in some situations would be Pela. Now, the same thing goes for Trailblazer. They can taunt, and so while Bailu may take damage, Pela and Clara could be safe. If you place your tanks or taunting units on the outside, there are situations where other units will be saved from taking damage because of the placement. If you're interested in more tips like this, consider subbing to the channel, and let's get started with some of the best tips for Honkai Star Rail. At this point in the game, you're actually going to be able to spend your Trailblaze power for the first time, and it's very important that you do use this up. Typically, once you reach this point as a new player, there's almost no reason not to just spam it all and use all of this for the Adventure Rank experience or the Trailblazer experience, uh, because you're not going to get to the next world tier for quite some time, and you might as well get this on cooldown and uh, progressing your account. Now, I'm going to show you some of the things that you can use this on. There's the basic materials like this, and from what I can tell, money, you get quite a bit of it. I've got a million, and I just leveled up characters, leveled up light cones, ascended people. I spent or, or thought I would be running out of the credits. I've got a ton still, a million. Now, the next thing is light cones. And once again, I've ascended some light cones. I've been leveling them up. I've got a bunch of purple ones, blue ones. This seems like I've got an absolute ton of but it seems to be the adventure logs, the experience for the characters that is uh, is the issue or something that's going to hold you back. If you have a bit of extra resin early on, I would just use it on experience. However, as you get further into the game, there's different things that open up. Now, these materials can be farmed for free. I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment, but I wouldn't recommend you really grind these out because I think that there's a much better thing that you should be doing. So priority one each week is to fight the Echoes of War bosses because these are talent level up materials and this is one of the biggest guaranteed boosts of damage in the game. But you can only do it three times a week. So here's my recommendation. Push your Trailblazer level as far as you can this week. Check this timer. Depending on when you watch this video, it might be six days or five days. But this week, you want to get as far as you possibly can, and then you want to clear it at the highest level possible, because the rewards you get are going to differ depending on how high this boss is. And so I'm rank 30 right now. I don't know if I'll get to 35. I'm going to be farming this any day now, because I want to level up some of the talents for my characters. You can only do it three times, so what do you do after that? At Trailblaze level 30, you're going to unlock Stagnant Shadow, and this is a brick wall on your progression if you have no uh, energy. If you didn't save up any fuel, you're going to wish you did, because these are key ascension materials to take your characters from level 40 uh, to 50 and beyond. This is a big, big upgrade for your characters, and I got like seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm working on another. I'm trying to ascend him right now. I need to use some of my fuel up. Um, and I think that people don't realize how important this is. This is guaranteed stats for one, but the other big thing is if you look at your characters and you look at their traces, as you ascend, you can level up these talents. And these are big jumps in damage that are built into the base damage of the character, the value of the character. So if you crit, if you get extra attack, if you're buffed by your teammate, it's all going to be scaling off this damage, and these need to be leveled up as soon as humanly possible. But the best part? This is all free! These materials on the uh, the traces, they don't require any sort of um, trailblazer level uh, or, or trailblazer requirements. Even these can be uh, got from the lower level ones for free, just from fighting enemies, uh, doing the simulated world, which we'll talk about later. This is all free upgrades, other than the big passes, which will require, uh, you know, the boss materials I talked about before. But for the most part, you know, you could be getting 20, 30% more damage on your character just by doing this. If we go and look at my Welt, who's brand new and unleveled, I can level this multiple times here. Imaginary damage um, is increased 36%. Let's do it again, right? Going to 39. 
Now we're going from 39, we're going to 43. We're getting 4% there. And uh, as soon as I send him, I can get another jump up. I can go to 46% damage. Simulated Universe is a roguelike that's going to give you multiple buffs as you progress. And things like these attack percentage buffs are going to become even more valuable because the base talent or trace level on your characters is increased. So make sure you do that as soon as you can. Get the guaranteed upgrades. And while we're on the topic, these simulated worlds are key for progression, giving you adventure rank, some wishes, as well as the best way, or one of the best ways, to farm ascension materials for your character. And it's free. You don't need to spend any energy, you can just come in here and grind. And that's why I would say, don't use your trailblaze levels uh, on this stuff. Now, as you push further into the game, uh, the rewards change, it gets harder and harder, but you can also start getting things like relics. Now, I won't touch onto this yet because you need to be quite a bit higher level before I think it's worth using your energy on this. We'll talk about relics later, um, but this is a really awesome place that you can farm and you're going to want to push into this as soon as you possibly can. On top of that, you need to grind this every single week because of this score bar. As you get more score, you get some free wishes, but there's a couple things in here that you need to get every week. Number one is the Track of Destiny, which is a uh, talent level up material, and it's very limited to get these. You can only get a couple of them a week at best. Now, the other thing is this currency called Herta Bond, because you can get free five-star light cones in the game. We're only a few days into Star Rail, and I'm at seven currency, so I can get a five-star light cone, like, tomorrow. I'll be able to beat the next world, which gives me two currency, um... And then, you know, we've got reset in a couple days to give me another one. It's going to be very easy for me to get my first five-star light cone. And these are awesome. They've got really good passives on them. Uh, they're going to scale beautifully. And there's a few of them that are available. On top of this, you can also buy uh, these superimposers, which means you can uh, up the passive. You can increase the passive of these. So if we look at this bad boy getting 8% attack uh, every time we attack, you can actually get 16%. You can superimpose this, uh, superimpose this multiple times and make it even better for free. Uh, so this needs to be something that you definitely do each week if you can, uh, because after just a few months, you're going to have a cracked account. There are a couple shops in game. There's one of them in the master control zone right here. You can talk to this guy and you get currency every time you do side quests or main quests, as well as opening chests. And they've got some awesome little rewards that you can get. And so pop in here from time to time. You can get Ascension materials. Uh, you can also get some experience and things that would normally cost you energy. And on top of that, as you start uh, uh, clearing this and buying all the stuff, you get wishes and you can get a four-star uh, light cone. There's some really good rewards. But on top of this, at rank 20 you can get your first four-star relic set. And if you get lucky, this could be a massive uh, improvement to your account. And we'll talk about relics fully uh, in a moment, but this shop you should clear out as soon as you can. Um, I would actually focus on this other stuff before the Eidolon because the physical main character is not that great. Uh, but there's another shop you want to check out as well. There is another shop, but you might not be at that point yet. But if you want to go to Boulder Town, uh, there's another shop here with some great rewards. Uh, there's another uh, relic set that you can buy. There's another Eidolon. And again, more rewards here. You can get another uh, four-star light cone. That's awesome. I still haven't actually cleared this shop, and I will eventually. But there is a new relic set if you want to get this one for physical damage dealers. Uh, and then there's just other essential uh, materials. Again, I would definitely get the uh, relic experience, the character experience, the light cone experience uh, as a priority. Because some of these other things can be farmed. All right, so I got a few tips for your relics, and this is going to change your life. Tip number one is, on your main DPS or two of your DPS units, max out your gloves. Even if you buy both sets from the shop early on, and, uh, and all the rolls, all the stats are, are bad in the substats, I don't care, max it. This amount of damage early on is insanity. I want to give you just a, a quick look. This is 234 attack on my character. If we look at her light cone, this is a four-star light cone, it's giving me 208. That artifact is better than my current light cone. And, and I can enhance this, and, and I can ascend this, and I can, I can close that gap. I can actually overtake it. But this is pretty far into the game uh, to get more attack than that. That is like getting an extra weapon thrown on your account uh, because you leveled it up. And uh, if you have a healing unit, a, a support unit, 
You can also do a similar thing um, with the the helmet because it's a guaranteed upgrade of HP. So you're healing more, you're tankier, yada, yada, yada. But now there's a couple big things that I want to talk about these two slots. Number one, I got lucky with my set. Yours might not look like this when you buy it, okay? This got crit rate percentage. There's crit damage. There's attack percentage, uh, HP percentage, defense percentage. You might not get anything that's good for damage. But uh, if you do find something that's got crit rate or crit damage early on, that's a pretty big win for your account. I leveled this up even though all of the substats are pretty trash overall, uh, but this crit rate is very valuable. I would definitely look for, you know, HP percentage or defense percentage on your uh, healers and support units, but boots, this is interesting. You can get speed on your boots and it allows you to use your turns uh, first. You can attack before the enemy, you can lap them and be faster than them so you get two turns to their one turn. Speed can be valuable on pretty much any unit in the game, and uh, and I would definitely prioritize it in a lot of situations. That being said, um, you can go attack percentage, and you can be ultra tanky uh, uh, with defense percentage or HP percentage. There's other things that you want to do, but I would recommend speed for almost every situation, and uh, you want units that buff you or debuff the enemy to have more speed than your damage dealer. It's called speed tuning, and I want to show you what that means. So speed tuning is when you get your characters to be different speeds so that they can execute their attacks in an order that's beneficial. Asta can boost the attack of all of my units, and so if she goes first, she is boosting up Pela and Clara and uh, Bailu. Now, Pela is going to attack, and she can shred the defenses of the enemy. And so she's getting a boosted attack, and then they're shredded. Maybe I get a heal off with Bailu, but the big thing I want is I want the attack buff and I want their defenses shredded so when Clara jumps in and attacks, she clears them and she kills them. If you wanted to use uh, Zila, if you wanted to use any other DPS unit, the same thing would apply. You want to buff them, you want to debuff, and then you want to pop off with that main character. And so optimally, if I wanted to, to do this properly, I would actually get rid of these speed boots. I'd give them to someone else, and I'd use an attack percentage boot. I currently don't have them, but that is what I would recommend you do in a lot of situations. That being said, if you can just nuke characters and, and one-shot them, and she goes first, it can speed up your farming. And that's what I'm doing. So if you want to start one-banging enemies and do thousands of damage, I want to explain the key way to do it. Number one, level up your character, ascend them, get the guaranteed upgrades there. Number two is, uh, is you're going to want to have their traces leveled up because this is just guaranteed damage. Number three, light cones. Light cones are your weapon. It is your damage source. It is very important to have. They all have different passives. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this game so far uh, from what I'm seeing. There are a lot of three-star options that can give you pretty good passives. And while the attack may be lower, even until rank 30, you're fine. Uh, an example of that is my Clara. I've been using a three-star light cone the entire time. Uh, I leveled it up to 40, and I've pushed all the way into rank th uh, you know, 30. I haven't had any troubles killing enemies. I can do 2,000 damage with her attacks. No problem, no questions asked. It's easy. Um, you can refine these things, right? And so you can get multiple copies of these three stars, uh, which leads to more damage, which is really cool. The four stars, I don't have any uh, super impositions. I don't have any extra copies to get more damage from this. And in fact, mathematically, because this passive is so weak, there are many three star light cones that are actually more damage. If I use these, I would probably hit harder. Um, Again, there are five-star light cones that you can get in the game for free, and that's something you should work towards. But for the most part, if you have a good light cone, three-star light cone, you uh, superimpose it all the way up, just level it. Level it to 40, level it to 50 if you need to. It's not the end of the world. It will carry your account. Don't be too stressed out. Don't be sleeping on it. The other thing, too, is it gives you HP and it gives you defenses. So if you don't do that, your characters are going to be uh, kind of weak. And uh, one example of that, I'll give you one right now, is uh, I, uh, I had this, this item on. I completely forgot about leveling it, and I was wondering, why is my Bailu dying? Because I'm missing out on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of HP, because I didn't have it. And, uh, you know, I had this one on for quite a while, 
This is uh, is pretty pathetic. It's pretty easy to level these things up. Take it to 40. Give them a couple free stats, and then you can min-max later. You're not going to regret it. The other thing, too, is if you grow out of the three stars, you can always feed it in and get a decent chunk of your experience back anyways. So there's no real loss. So you've got your traces, your light codes, your ascensions. The next big thing is relics, right? Substats are important. The glove is guaranteed damage. The chest piece can be damaged. The boots can be damaged. But there's one more thing that's very important. Uh, and if you've played Genshin Impact, you'd already know this. But there are other slots that are available. And, uh, and there's different stats that you can get on them. Now, this is uh, similar to the time piece in Genshin Impact. But you can get attack percentage on this. And for your damage dealers, that's going to be what you want, is attack percentage in this slot. In this slot, you can get elemental damage bonuses, and that's what you're going to want to get. If you can match the set piece, that's awesome, but you can get like 30-40% more uh, quantum damage or, or fire damage. That is more valuable in most cases than the, uh, the passive, so I would definitely uh, look for those pieces if you get them and level them up. And then finally, the next thing is Eidolons. You don't really need them, but obviously they add damage. Don't spend money on this game. It's very free-to-play friendly. Next thing is food buffs are actually like crazy. Again, if you remember that glove, it's like 230 attack. This is a 5% increase plus 170. If you're going into a boss fight, this is like doubling your damage in the early game. It's like tripling your damage in the early game. Now, let's talk about the gotcha. Maybe you're brand new and you're seeing this. You haven't even played. I would re-roll. I know that some people don't like re-rolling and they think it's a waste of time, but I have a cracked free-to-play account because I put in a little bit of time to get a couple of five stars early, and I recommend it. I like it. I think it's a fun process of gacha games. But if you don't re-roll, if you don't get lucky, here's a couple of things. The beginner warps are cool, but if you get a five star like I did early, my recommendation would actually be to dip out of here and stop doing it. While you do get a discount, the way I look at it is, in this situation, I've got 30 more pulls. So I'm going to save like six wishes overall. But there is no guarantee that you'll get another five star if you get one early. And so you can use your pity in this banner that actually does have pity, and you can start building that pity up. I'm going to give you a great example of that. It took me 82 wishes to get my next five star. All right? It took me 82 wishes, page after page after page right? And so if you can start working towards this to get your next five star, I think that that's a win. And yes, you might lose six wishes of free wishes, but you're losing like 30 wishes, right? You're, you're losing like 25 wishes of pity and progress here. So that's what I would do. Um, the other thing too is I would definitely guard these resources, guard your, your stellar jade, because these characters are typically going to power creep everything that you know, is on the standard banners and came before it, I would recommend that you uh, save up for each character if you can. If you don't like their style, if you've got other, you know, characters that cover that element, then chillax. Example, I got this character. She's quantum damage. I may skip the next quantum damage one because I don't have any fire characters. I don't have any good ice characters. I am going to definitely be looking and pulling for units that will build out my roster on top of this. There are weapon banners or light cone banners. I do not recommend these ever. I would say that this one is cracked on, on Sila. I get it. It is good. It's a very good piece. But you're probably going to run into situations where you need different elements and different characters more than you need 10% or 15% more damage on a character. Can you even survive? Can you even deal with the enemy shields or the mechanics that they have? Depending on your, your roster and your characters, I think that this is unnecessary, especially on, on hunt characters and destruction, because you can buy five-star light cones. The Forgotten Hall is like the Spiral Abyss, where you go in and you fight multiple different enemies, and you're going to get rewards for doing it. You're going to get some uh, credits, and you're going to get some Stellar Jade, and then you get some other rewards. Now, here's the beautiful thing. This one right here, the Lucian Dafter Glow, this can actually be used to purchase um, light cones. And there's going to be another version down the road that resets so you can continue to farm this. Uh, but if you talk to this girl here, the messenger, uh, and you shop, you can actually buy some of these light cones. And I'm missing good ones for multiple different characters. And, uh, you know, I could maybe jack up my healer, give her something that's going to give me some more value. And I think that this is a great way to uh, kind of fill the gaps in your light cones. 
especially for your healing and support characters who maybe you don't want to prioritize as much. Uh, that's what I'm planning on doing. Uh, so it's even less incentive to wish on these weapon or light cone banners. As you complete story quests, you might notice a character from the story visiting. Go talk to them and they will give you 10 stellar jade the first time you do it. Daily training is a must-do thing if you want to progress in the game because it gives you adventuring experience, it gives you stellar jade, but also it gives you relic materials and like these are kind of hard to get overall. Uh, these are so easy to do. If you don't do them, you're a dummy. If you're gated on Trailblaze level and you can't do a quest, make sure to check back in with the operation briefing because there might be something that you can do relatively easy to get some guaranteed experience and there's wishes and other uh, rewards available, but there's a couple times that this came in clutch. On top of wishing, you are going to get this Undying Starlight, which you can exchange for 5-star weapons as well as characters. Now, there might be a situation where you can get, like, Eidolon 6 for a character and you really want it, but typically, you will get all the 4-stars over time if you play long-term. And what I recommend you do is save up, even if it's painful, uh, on some of these 5-star weapons, especially if you have the character or a similar character that can benefit. Clara's Light Cone is actually like pretty solid on almost any uh, destruction damage dealer. And so I would recommend that you save it up, uh, look at your roster and see if you can fill the gaps and get a, a nice bang for your buck. However, you can also get the, the special passes. If you want to get the banner characters, it's not the end of the world. You know, this is 30 wishes towards it for one weapon. Uh, that means you're going to get three four-star characters. Maybe you get lucky, you get that five-star uh, it's going to depend on, on how you view the game and what's valuable to you. I'm going to just wait till I'm closer and make the decision. If I end up getting a couple light cones uh, from, you know, different things, maybe I, would, I don't need them. Maybe I don't want them. And I'll focus on getting the Star Rail passes. But here's something you can buy every week. And uh, if you're just starting now, you've got one day to do this. Okay, you might have 29 days, depending on when you watch this. I don't know uh, what day you watch this, but... You can buy these Star Rail Passes, Special Passes, and Regular Passes every month. It resets, and you will easily get enough of these Embers to do it. All of this other stuff is bait. These are all farmable materials. If you buy this, you are a silly goose. This stuff, uh, you know, it requires some of your energy. I know you want to progress, but do not spend it. If you can't buy these every month, uh, you're missing out on a lot of progression in the game uh, for character Eidolons or just getting, uh, you know, new 5 stars. My biggest tip is don't spend a bunch of money on this game. If you really want to get a bunch of characters, you like it, you want to support the game, you know, you can get the supply pass. I, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but there is going to be a day where you're going to quit the game and all of this is going to go away. If you have more fun and it's worth it to you, do your thing. But also remember that for some people, buying characters and, and getting a jacked up account, it actually ruins the fun. I'm one of those people that doesn't like getting, uh, you know, pay to win. If you, if you like it, do your thing, but just be careful with your money because the rates in this game can lead to you spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get a pixel character that, like, you might not care about in a month or two. All right, I've got a couple tips for, like, characters because there's a few that I really want to shout out. Asta being one of them. She's a free-to-play unit. She's She's... The first unit you get uh, from the wishes, and uh, she's kind of crazy. She's better than you might think. Now, if you look at her skills and you look at uh, at what she can do, she's got a passive that gives you attack to your teammates as you hit enemies. If you get Eidolons, she goes from being good to unbelievable. Um, you get one extra uh, kind of tick of damage with your skill, which means it's easier to stack up her passive that gives all of your team damage. Okay, and at E2. If you use your ultimate, the charging stacks don't get reduced in the next turn, which means it's even easier to keep max stats. This unit can give your team like 40% more damage at all time, the entire fight. She can also boost up your speed, meaning you cycle turns more, uh, which means she can shred more shields and buff your team, and it's crazy. Asta is amazing. Um... Kayla can be really fun. I don't think she's super meta, but she's one of the unique characters that can defense break, keep your eyes open. Bailu is nuts, okay? This unit is, uh, people were like, oh, it's five-star Chi-Chi. She's just a healer. You need a lot of healing in this game. She can also revive one of your units mid-fight. If you get Bailu, you win. Not, not necessarily you win, but um, she's amazing. I, I would recommend her, but... You get a free healer, Natasha, and I think she's really good, too. She's really good, too. With Eidolon, she becomes even better, uh, but she's a free unit. You got to build her, and you got to make her strong. 
Okay, if you don't have Bailu, you need to make her really strong so she can heal your team, or you need to go the other route of shielding, which means you need to build March 7th, okay? You need either big heals or big shields. Um, the uh, the MC can help you shield. March 7th can help you shield. There's, there's five-star units, but you need some sort of sustain or you're going to start dying uh, in the later phases, okay? Uh, another crazy character, Tingyun is god tier, absolutely amazing she can buff up your damage she can give you energy for your ultimate this is uh sss tier four star unit so if you get her you win okay uh there's some other ones that you know you could shout it and talk about servos free good aoe um dan hang really good solo target damage dealer he's great if you just use the free characters you can beat everything in the game don't be stressed out spending money you're gonna need to do side quests in this game, but I would recommend you really bang them out and, and focus on them so that you don't keep getting locked uh, out of the main story quests. I know that I'm getting really close to being locked out of this quest until I'm uh, like level 34. And so from time to time, these are great for your Trailblazer experience. They give you uh, Stellar Jade for wishes, uh, but sometimes they got other great rewards as well, uh, especially the currency so you can buy out those shops early on. Don't sleep on the side quests. If you see one, pick it up, do it. Uh, and, and that's a big key to your progression long term. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.